are here at the spectacular Heron Tower and I am hosting the very exciting launch of a new ship for Royal Caribbean and it's called the Anthem of the Seas. It's going to be a very beautiful ship but it's also got a really strong connection with music. Every human society's got music. It predates language. Babies react to music before they react to words. I was approached to put together uh, a kind of uh, a, a shortlist of anthems and I was asked to look at what makes an anthem, what is an anthem, what is it about music and certain songs that get under people's skin, that unite people, inspire people and that was put out to the great British public and they've come up with their favourites. I think music is very important uh, for travel, partly because it creates an atmosphere, so it really makes sense for Royal Caribbean to have that connection with music and to invest so heavily in it. The first two anthems you're going to hear, uh, two good uh, Midlands lads actually, Edward Elgar and Robbie Williams, one a Port Vale supporter, one a Wolves supporter. Uh, Robbie Williams' Angels and then Elgar's Nimrod, both performed by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Angels, by that man Robbie Williams, is the biggest selling single of his career. It was voted at the Brit Awards the best song of the past 25 years. Nimrod by Edward Elgar, seen by many people as the quintessential English composer. Solid, wistful, proper, sober, full of Edwardian elegance and melancholy. Hey Jude struck me as one of the, uh, the most typical and appropriate Beatles tracks to pick. It was the first release on their own label, Apple, and thus it became the biggest selling single ever on a new label. The song's kind of embedded itself into the national consciousness, I think, a genuine anthem. I don't know if you know, it's said to have been written about Julian Lennon by Paul McCartney, and I think it's got that kind of a feeling of real compassion and humanity about it. Jerusalem, Parry, well, the unofficial national anthem, a lot of people would say. Beloved of many people, not of a royalist leaning, say. It's Hubert Parry's setting of a poem by William Blake. It's become almost ubiquitous at major public events and ceremonies. brings us to the number one anthem, as was voted for by the correspondents in the UK. It'd be wrong not to include one by one of the architects of Stadium or Arena Rock, because the natural home of rock and pop music was once the, the small club or the theatre, but after Live Aid, a new kind of music emerged to fit the stadiums of the world. It was simple, socially conscious, often with huge anthemic choruses. Its main practitioners were the band you're going to hear, as well as Simple Minds, later Coldplay and Oasis. So it's our final anthem of the night, you've probably guessed it's It's a Beautiful Day by U2. Thank you all for coming. I hope you found some of the music and some of the insights interesting. And the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra have been fantastic. Bob Geldof once said that, you know, everybody talks about the power of art, but you don't often stand in front of a painting and cry. But music has that power over us. It's the closest thing we've got to magic.